Okay, today we're going to do a little lecture on Newton's second and third laws, mostly the third law, with a little review of the second law, starting off with the homework from last night. So first of all, we have the homework from Unit 2. These are problems, uh, start with problem number 7, um, where we have 25 kilogram cart and acceleration of 2.0 meters per second squared. F equals ma, so mass times acceleration will give you 50 newtons of force. Next problem, number eight. Let it up quickly. You have a net force of 60 newtons and an acceleration of 4.0 meters per second squared. So to get the mass, that is just going to be the force divided by the acceleration. And so we're going to get 60 divided by 4.0, which is 15, <coughs> excuse me, kilograms. Okay, moving on. Okay, so problem number nine. We know that the net force equals mass times acceleration, and we're given that we have a block on a horizontal surface with a 45 newton push force, a 15 newton kinetic friction force, so the net force is 45 minus 15, and that's going to give us the mass times acceleration, which is 10, 10 kilograms times acceleration. So we simplify, we get 30 newtons for the net force, we divide that by 10 kilograms, and we're going to get that the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. I should say 3.0, but for now we're going to keep going. It says what is the final velocity using kinematics? So we use the equation V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Um, the V final will then be 3 meters per second squared, which we got in the problem before, times 2 seconds, and we get 6.0 meters per second. Um, and then the last problem. Last problem, we have a block where 30 newton force up uh, it's a 20 newton force down, that's the gravity force, and it's a 2 kilogram block, so the net force is going to be mass times acceleration. 30 minus 20 is 10. Uh, 2 kilograms, you divide that, you're going to get 5 meters per second squared of acceleration. That's the homework, so let's move on. Okay, so Newton's first law, remember, was the law of inertia. A body at rest remains at rest, or a body in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by a net outside force. Um, so uh, I do have a quick video, but I'm not going to be able to show it to you through this lecture. You're going to have to go look it up on your own. Um, that just shows uh, how airbags and seatbelts and headrests protect you from damage from the law of inertia. When a car comes to a quick stop and you want to keep on going, so those safety devices will protect you. Okay, so here's a quantitative question. This is another uh, Newton's second law problem. Let's take a look at a 20 kilogram block of ice is being pulled along the frictionless ice rink by two ropes parallel to the ice rink that each make a 30 degree angle with the direction of the ice block is moving. The tension in each rope is 10 newtons. Find the acceleration of the block. Okay, so from this picture, it looks like this is one of those pictures with a block hanging from, you know, the ceiling with ropes, but that's not what it's supposed to indicate. This is like a top view looking down, and so what it's supposed to represent is a block that's being pulled by two ropes and therefore it's sliding along and the ropes are at an angle. So what you need to figure out, and I'm trying to draw it here with this little schematic, is um, we start by saying, hang on, I'm going to pause that for a second. We start by saying that um, to the, uh, you know, up um, or along the direction of motion, we're going to go over the plus x direction. There isn't going to be any motion in the plus y because those components of forces are going to cancel out. So you want to know what is the acceleration in the x direction. So you label your forces, you've got two tension forces and they're 10 newtons each. So you've got to figure out, well, what is, the ten the, what is the component of that tension in the x direction? And then you sum up those forces. So it turns out if you break down one triangle, you're going to find that uh, 10 newtons times the sine of 60 will give you that um, force in the x direction. Um, and you get two of those, so if you double that, um, you're going to get equal, set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. So we get a total of... Uh, 20 newtons times the sine of 60 equals mass times acceleration, um, and then we solve, uh, and we'll get the acceleration is about 0.87 meters per second squared. So Newton's second law, as we found, was acceleration is directly related to the force. Big acceleration means a big force, or big force means big acceleration. Um, and by the same token, if the mass gets really big, the acceleration is going to get small. So the acceleration and the mass are inversely related. Um, we often write it, uh, it's most commonly written as F net equals mass and acceleration, but you also see it uh, with the acceleration waves as well. So this is just a kind of a cute little um, 
cartoon. I encourage you to pause the video and take a look at it, um, just because it's fun to look at and follow along the reasoning. This is a Paul Hewitt, a, a thoughtful little cartoon that helps you understand falling bodies. But I'll let you read it, and so we'll move on for now. All right, so Newton's third law, that's kind of the main topic for today. Uh, the idea of Newton's third law is that uh, the idea of action and reaction forces. In other words, these forces come in pairs, and they're always the same kind of force. Uh, so I highlight that, because that's going to be important when we start looking for reaction forces. So, again, the law, third law says, for every force there is an equal in magnitude and opposite in direction force. So that's sort of the text of Newton's third law. Uh, Newton's third law states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first object. Um, in vector form, you'd say this, the force of, vector of, of object 1 on 2 is equal to the opposite of the force in vector form of object 2 on 1. Oops, that went too fast. Let's back that up. Sorry. Yikes. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now, slowly. Ah, it still went really fast. Okay, I'm trying to slow it down. Well, here we go. I just gave away the answer. Applying Newton's third law to a block hanging from a vertical rope, if the action is the force of tension the rope exerts on the block, then the reaction force is, and you have these three choices. Um, is it gravitational force the earth exerts on the block? Is it the gravitational force the block exerts on the earth? Well, no, it's the force of tension that the block exerts on the rope. So, uh, there's a force of tension that the rope exerts on the block. The reaction is going to be the force of tension that the block exerts on the rope. So, first of all, you need to notice that you have one object force on the other, and then you reverse those two objects. The second thing to note is that they're both force of tensions. So, you don't have a force of tension as one force, and then a gravity as the other force. They're always going to go together, the same types of force. So pay attention to that when you're thinking about uh, uh, action-reaction forces. So here comes uh, another example. Hopefully this won't give it away. Applying Newton's third law to a ball resting in my hand, the action force is the gravitational pull on the ball. Okay, so the gravitational pull on the ball, that's the action force. Then what is the reaction force? Okay, you got four choices. So I want you to pause the video and think about these and figure out which one you think it is. And I'll reveal it in just a second. Okay, so this might be a little bit surprising. The answer is C. And the reason it's C, hang on, the reason it's C is because we're talking about a gravitational force. So a gravitation of force of the Earth acting on the ball has to have a reaction force of the gravitational force of the ball acting on the Earth. Now that might seem strange to think about how, uh, well it's not strange to think about how the Earth pulls the ball and causes the ball to come closer to the Earth. It does seem strange to think about how the ball actually pulls on the Earth and the Earth gets closer to the ball. In fact it does do that, but it's so uh, the, the Earth is so huge, enormously large compared to the ball, that it's harder to, uh, to uh, measure that or observe that the Earth is in fact moving. But those are the action-reaction forces. They're both gravitational um, and one acts on the other, so you have to be careful. Um, some people will often say that the, the uh, reaction force, the gravitational pull, is the normal force of the hand on the ball. And uh, you don't have one force of gravitational and the other one be a normal. Those are two different kinds of forces. So if you do it, we're talking about what's the, if you have the normal force of my hand, then what would be the reaction force? Uh, the, 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 the normal force of the hand of my hand on the ball, then the reaction to that would be the, um, the normal force of my, the ball on my hand. So they're both normal forces going back and forth. So just think about how that sort of parallelism is important when we're looking at Newton's third law. Um, so other examples um, that you might not think about, but now you can, of the, uh, Newton's third law, uh, a ball hitting a bat. So a ball, uh, I'm sorry, a bat hits a ball, but the ball also hits the bat. And if you've ever hit the ball kind of funny, not in the sweet spot, you'll feel that sort of vibration in your hands. Um, so there is a reaction force. Hammer hitting a nail. Uh, the nail feels the hammer, but the hammer also feels the nail. Shotgun firing a bullet, and if you have an experience shooting a shotgun or any type of rifle, you'll see that uh, while the bullet goes in one direction, there's a reaction force that pushes the shotgun in the opposite force. When you play patty cake, as you slap hands hard together, 
both of you feel exactly the same force. Uh, swimmer in the water, what does this one mean? Well, the idea is this. If you're plowing through the water, your hand is putting a force on the water, but then in return, the water is putting a force on your hand and kind of propelling you ahead. That's the whole idea behind uh, swimming. Um, now over here we have the guy leaning on the wall. He says, look at the wall pushing on me. So he's pushing on the wall, but the wall is pushing right back. And the two forces are equal and opposite. A couple other fun little examples. Um, when you have a car on a road, the action might be the tire pushing on the road, but then the reaction is that the road pushes back. It's really good that tires have friction on the road so that the roads can push back. If you were riding a tire on a sheet of ice, then uh, you have no friction and the road is not going to push back and you are not going to travel very fast, or at least not be able to accelerate because you can't grip that ice, so that friction is important. Uh, next one, uh, a rocket is expelling high temperature, high volume, high, high, I'm sorry, high powered gas, um, and as that shoots that gas out behind it, um, it will propel uh, the rocket forward. That is an action-reaction force. Um, and here's the, the example we just talked about a few minutes ago, where you have uh, Galileo dropping a ball off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, there is a, a force acting on the ball to pull it down, but at the same time, the ball acts on the earth to pull the earth closer to it. You just don't really see it move very much. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like this, being on a boat and then trying to jump off onto the shore. I actually have seen a friend do this and fall right in the water. What's happening here is you're stepping on the edge of your canoe, and you think, oh, I'm going to push off the canoe and then jump on the dock. But what you forget is that the, uh, it's not just the canoe pushing you, but you are pushing the canoe, and the canoe goes right out from under you, and you go straight down into the water. Uh, and finally, the dog. The tail wags the dog, or the dog wags the tail. It's like, which is the action and which is the reaction? But you can see, have you ever seen a dog actively wag wagging his tail? You can see that his whole body starts to shake as a reaction to that. It's kind of funny. Okay, so here's some, some, dumb, some fun demos that you're going to miss because you're not in class. It's too bad. Okay, here is a practice problem, Newton's Third Law. And it says, a 60-kilogram woman on a fr frictionless horizontal ice pulls on a horizontal rope attached to a 20-kilogram sled, which is also on the ice. The sled accelerates at 2.4 meters per second squared. Find the woman's acceleration. Okay, so we always start by drawing a little picture. So here we go. I'm going to draw it really fast. And boom, there it is. So we got everything labeled. I got the woman, and she's pulling on the sled um, with a horizontal rope. She's 60 kilograms. The sled is 20 kilograms. And I do a little diagram that says the force of the woman on the sled is equal to the force, here's the force of the woman on the sled, is equal to the force of the sled on the woman. Equal and opposite. Now we can write mathematical relationships to help us solve this problem. So F equals MA. So now I can write uh, MA for the woman on the sled, uh, for the woman pushing, is the mass of the woman times the acceleration of the woman is equal to the minus the mass of the sled times the acceleration of the sled. Um, because the forces are equal and opposite. And so I set them up and plug in my values, 60 kilogram woman times the acceleration of the woman, which we're trying to find, equals the opposite of 20 kilogram sled times minus 2.4 meters per second squared, because I'm, I, in this diagram I had the acceleration going to the left, so I'm assuming my answer is going to have the woman going to the right. Um, and so when we solve it, we do get A is positive, 8.0 meters per second squared, and so yes, in fact, when she pulls on that sled, she's going to get pulled to the right, just as the sled is going to get pulled towards her. And that concludes our lecture for today.